Hey guys, this is Eric Wangana with Wangana Racing. Um, another video for you. This is not tech related at all, um, but I think I have a solution to something. Sorry I look kind of run down. Um, I have swim lessons on Mondays, or as I like to call it, attempted drowning. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to swim, so I've been taking lessons to learn, hence the reason why I look. I'm only saying that because I don't have a new little garb on or something. But anyway, so I put out a video yesterday and I talked about my experience at the uh, track when I took the S10 out and the, the problems or issues that I had and why that would make me upset. And several people gave me great ideas on the help with the anger thing and I appreciate that. But one of the things I, and I try to do this throughout most of my life is finding solutions. So it's anybody, including myself, and I'm probably pretty bad about it, is uh, anybody can complain about anything. That's one of the things and I think we've gotten really, really good at it, especially myself. I think the world in general has gotten really good about complaining about just about everything. But if you only complain, you're just a politician because uh, politicians, all they do is tell you what the problems are and don't fix it. So I was today when I was grinding, I was thinking there's got to be a solution. And I think I have come up with something and I wanted to run it by you guys to see what you guys thought. Uh, maybe, maybe you could uh, see what happens. But um, so when you look back at, please watch the previous video, make more sense. When I looked back at the reason why the um, experience of the track wasn't that great, I'm not talking about the truck's performance. Um, I'm talking about like all the issues why it was taking so long in the staging lanes and pretty much everything else um, was related to a few issues. And it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily one thing or the other. And it sounds like I'm dancing around, but I'll get to the point, I promise. So you couldn't say, well, it's the drivers or you couldn't say, well, it was the track. When honestly, neither one were totally at fault. But I think I found a solution. When the, what happened was this cars and coffee event. I actually got coffee, but um, you had a whole bunch of people who were at street cars, like Camaros, Cor uh, Corvettes, Mustangs, Chargers, all those, um, and got out there to race. But here's the thing: those people that come out to race, several of them probably were their first time ever racing, or um, had been out before. But the biggest problem I would say, and it was slowing everything down, was they didn't know what to do. So, you know, and you, if you think about this, like I've been racing for a while, so I kind of get an idea what's gonna happen at the track. But if you look at some of these, some of them are really, really young, which also I was like, I'm, I'm looking at some of the drivers, I'm like, you're like 20. How do you have a $70,000 Corvette? But whatever. I think some of the biggest problems, they just don't know what to do at the track. Um, I thought, you know, things would speed up a lot faster if they knew what to do. So then I was like, well, how would you fix it? So here's what I came up with, and here's the solution I have. I thought what needs to happen is there needs to be some kind of education course for what to do when you go to a drag strip. From the minute you go um, to the, the gate to pay, to the tech, to uh, where not to park, where to park, what to do in the staging lanes and all that. And I know you're like, well, they could just do YouTube videos. I don't think that there is anyone really, and who watches that? So here's what I came up with, and I try to make it happen somewhat today. Um, I thought, you know what? I will volunteer my time one night, just one day to do this. Or, and I, I know I can get some other people involved too. There's a guy that painted this car. His name's Greg Buffalo and I haven't talked to him yet. And there's probably some other guys I know I could talk to that probably help me out with this. What we would do is we'd volunteer our time and here's the ideal situation. We'll see what happens. Talk to the track, see, this is the goal. You get, talk to the track, say, hey track, can you um, prep the track one day, have the safety personnel there like one Wednesday for like two to three hours tops. And what you do is you say, hey guys, there's gonna be no charge for this and you get to make one pass. And here's the, except the, the difference. When you come into the gate, you're gonna sign just like you normally do and you're gonna park your car and hopefully park in the right spot. But before anybody goes down the drag strip, and you have to be in by a certain time, if your car's aren't in by, say, we started at seven, all the cars have to be in the gates by eight, and we're gonna click them through really fast. We're gonna have a whole pe bunch of people getting through the sign thing to get them in there. At eight o'clock, we're gonna have a driver's meeting, and what I'm gonna do, this is the goal, was me and some other people, we're gonna talk about, hey, this is what happens. When you come in, your cars are gonna, you know, sign release, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to tech. And here's what the tech guys are gonna go through. We're not gonna be super in depth, but the biggest things about what to expect and what, what not to do. 
So they, because they kept having announcements, turn off your air conditioner um, before you went down the strip. And I don't think they understood why they did it. It's because you leak water on the track, for those that don't know. But anyway, uh, you, you do this grand thing. We'll tell them, you know, this is what happens you, with tech. This is what they're going to go through. These are pit stalls. These are uh, for people. Unless you're part of that crew, you can't park there. Never park behind this. And this is where you can stand to watch something. Don't stand here. And um, then what we're going to do is we're going to show them. Like I can bring my truck. I don't care. Um, this is how you actually, where you stop for when we're going to do a burnout and stuff. And you don't, for those behind them, you don't cross this point. This is how you kind of do a burnout. Some general suggestions. If you're on street tires, this is what you do. Um, and then tell them actually how to stage the car. Because it sounds really, really simple. But when you, I mean... We've been doing enough, we kind of get the idea. But I can know for sure what was happening. And part of the reason why it was taking so long to run the cars is because they hadn't been there before. So they were rolling right through the stage beams, then backing up after the guy had activated it so that he had to kept stopping to, all right, guys, back up, do, do this. But they had no idea what to do. So we do that. We're like, all right, guys, get, show them exactly the whole process. Go through a whole bunch of things, like how the tree works, what a pro tree is, what a bracket tree is. Um, just the way it functions. And then what we do is, we go, all right guys, you're gonna get one pass. Now this time we're gonna do it totally different since we got you in as quick as possible. This would never normally happen this way, but we're gonna tech you right, you're gonna to come to these staging lanes. And I'm gonna tell you where I want you to be, um, staging lane so-and-so. And we're gonna have a tech guy, so they're gonna come by and they're gonna look at your cars before you pull up. Now this is the only time that it's different. Then you're gonna pull up and here's what we're gonna do. And I would donate a hundred bucks for this. What you're gonna do is we're gonna give you a car number. And if you do everything that we told you perfectly, don't care about how fast you ran at all. So if you pull up, you stopped at the right spot, you did a burnout correctly, you staged the car correctly, and then you ran, don't care what you ran, 15 seconds or nine seconds, don't care. If you made a perfect run as far as doing what you're supposed to, your car number, like mine is not on this side, but your car number would be entered into a drawing. And at the end of the night, we're gonna reach in that bucket and we're gonna pull out the number, uh, randomly pull out a number, and that guy gets 100 bucks. Don't, so that car could be running like a 17 seconds if he just does what he's supposed to. In other words, he listened to what was taught, that guy would get 100 bucks. So you got to run your car down the track, you've got your time, one time. Just to, the reason why one time is because we just wanna get it through, it's gonna be probably during a weekday, so it's not messing up any race schedule thing. That, I really want this to happen. Now, what did I do today to try to make this happen? I contacted the um, track manager for Tulsa Raceway Park. I told him this idea and he goes, you know, they tried it a while ago, um, but they were trying to get them set up to know how to bracket race or whatever. I don't even want that. I just want them to know what to do at the track because it's not the track's fault that the guys don't know what to do. It's not the kid's fault or whoever's behind it because sometimes they're just older fellas too, first time at the track, that don't know what to do. It's because it's not like it's just born, you know how to race at a track. This needs to happen. And I would gladly volunteer my time, and I know with some other people too. There's a guy I want to try, his name's Carl Bright. He does a YouTube video too. He races everywhere. It'd be cool to have him just come up. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna show you what he's doing, and we're gonna help you. And I get a whole bunch, I know I can get volunteers that will help with the guys. Be like, I want you to walk down there, make sure they're in there. If they got any questions, because maybe they don't want to ask in front of a whole group. You make sure they're good to go. And then at the end of the track, when they come around, I want someone stopping them to say, hey, because uh, maybe we can radio to him and go, hey, this is what you did right or this is what you did wrong. Otherwise, you know, just to kind of help them out. They'll get their times for their car and then they learn. And the best part about this is even though you probably aren't going to get as many people as you want to show up to that, the goal of it is whenever they go out with their friends and their friends are like, I've never been there before, what do you do? They'll be able to tell them, look, this is what you do because I learned. And they can pass that knowledge on. So this way you don't have a whole bunch of people never been in the track don't know what to do because the people that have been there can show them the way. So that's what I think the solution is. I'm hoping, and I'm gonna email them tonight and see if, to follow up, see if maybe it can happen because I really don't mind volunteering. I know there's a bunch of guys that wouldn't mind doing this if we could just do one time to make this happen. Because I think if we took the same people that were there at this cars and coffee thing, that knowledge would spread enough where things would go so much smoother for events. Um, I think it'd be a huge help. But anyway, that's my solution. Tell me what you think. 
And uh, hopefully this will happen because I would be all for it. I don't even have to take my truck. I'm, there's plenty of other people that could be great for demonstration. Because I like to bring someone with a slick and then someone with the street tires because some people go around the water and some with like, even when I was on the Nittos, I still did a burnout um, just because they get to get the rocks off. But um, just the whole thing, I think it'd be a huge help and I, I, to all of them. And I, if you're another track like MAD, which is Midwest, um, they're in uh, Ark City, Kansas, I'd be happy to do the same with them. Swear to God, I'd even bring some of my crew from here, go down there and help with that deal. I think I don't mind helping out with that. So, uh, cause I, I, I really do think, um, I think tracks should have at least one or two days a year where they have like, Hey, we need to educate you guys. Um, it'll help. And I think it'll help their track run so much smoother. It'll make the experience better because I didn't have a fun time there. And it, and I don't blame the track. Like I said, it's nobody's fault, but my own, cause you control your own destiny, but you can't, anybody else there can't say, this is the best, funnest time I've ever had. But you could, you can't say that. But if we could have made it run smoother, I guarantee you'd be like, oh, I'll be happy to go again. I think it helps the track in the long run. Instead of being like, man, it's miserable. So that's my idea and solution. Tell me what you think. Guys, thanks for watching. Um, coffee. <laughs>